We're at Fox Dates Bucharest 2018, and I'm really pleased to be joined by David Dalabasi. David, nice to see you here, um, and thanks for joining us. Um, so, you're here, you've got a session today. Um, tell us a bit about that. So the session that I have today uh, is on FN Project, which is uh, a fast, so a serverless platform. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, we announced that project last year at Java One. So it's an open source polyglot container-based uh, serverless platform. So mm -hmm. I'm going to discuss uh, how it works and show that uh, basically you can easily use it to write Java-based function or Go function or Kotlin function, basically any kind of function. Great stuff. And I know a lot of people will know you because of the work in Enterprise Java. And some people might be a bit confused about what's happening now because we've seen um, effectively Java EE move over to Eclipse Foundation, become open source, and there's a new name there now with Jakarta EE. So can you kind of maybe explain a little bit the landscape there for us now? Okay, I will try to recap. So uh, last summer, uh, Oracle, has announced its intention to open source uh, Java e. Because we basically wanted to reboot how the Java e platform evolves, so we want to make sure that the platform can evolve more quickly, can also adapt to the market needs in a more agile way. And we also wanted to have something which is really vendor independent. So that's why we wanted to uh, go to an open source foundation. Since then, we have obviously chosen that foundation, that's the Eclipse Foundation. And that effort used to be known as EE4J. Because, I mean, we needed at that time to have a name. So EE4J is really a project name that is hosting all that effort. Yep. And since then, uh, there is a new name. So EE4J still uh, remains. But there is a new name, which is Jakarta EE. And Jakarta EE is really the brand name. Okay. So basically, the idea is that we want to preserve something that we had uh, in Java since years, one of the key values, and that's, that's compatibility. So you have um, multiple implementation of the specification, and you basically can easily port your code from one, from one container to the other, because the container has passed a bunch of tests that prove that they are compliant. So in Jakarta EE, we still want to have that, so that means effectively that the TCK and so basically the TCK are the tests that are used to, uh, to, to, to test that compliance. The TCK will be open source, so they will be uh, brought, they will be uh, donated to the Eclipse Foundation. And then the Eclipse Foundation will define some kind of process uh, to enforce that compatibility. And once uh, an implementation has passed the TCK, whatever the name of the test uh, will be, but let's call them TCK for now, uh, then uh, that basically means that this implementation will be a Jakarta EE okay. compatible implementation. Yeah. So, is there anything for developers out there working with Java EE or Jakarta EE now? Is there any anything that you you think they most need to understand right now about any of these changes? So, yeah, there are multiple things. So, the first first thing is that. Uh, EE4J, Jakarta EE. So the first release of Jakarta EE uh, will be based on Java EE8. Okay. So um, you take Java EE8 today, that will basically be in a few months from now what the initial release of Jakarta EE will be. It's, it's the same code base. So that basically means that Jakarta EE is starting from Java EE8. Then something that people need uh, to know is the fact that uh, we basically started that uh, initiative uh, months ago, last summer. Uh, this is something that takes time because uh, it's not a small project. I mean, there are a lot of uh, underlying projects under the E4J umbrella, like Glassfish, uh, Jersey, Mojara, um, the TCK that will soon be open source and so on. So we are effectively working on the Oracle side and on the Clip side uh, to make sure that this, this happens as quickly as possible. There are already a few repositories which have been put on the uh, EE4J side, but it will still take us a few uh, weeks, uh, maybe months, um, to get it there. Uh -huh. So what we want to uh, achieve, I mean the first milestone that we want to achieve is all the, all the Java EA code should be on the Eclipse Foundation side. And um, basically me, that, that will allow us uh, the E4J um, uh, project to build a first implementation that will have to pass the Java E8 uh, TCK. So we'll start from that. This is really the major milestone that we want to get as soon as we can. 
there. And obviously, once we have that, that will prove that everything can be built on the Eclipse side. So there is no dependency anymore uh, with anything that is Oracle uh, led. In parallel, um, we are working on defining how we will uh, evolve the different technologies that are part of the platform. And then it will allow us to basically evolve the platform. Yeah. So people will still hear the Java EE name, they'll still hear Jakarta EE, they'll hear EE4J. And that, that that's a very good remark. So there, there, there's some confusions regarding uh, Java EE and EE4J or Jakarta EE. So Java EE was not rebranded or renamed into Jakarta EE. I mean, today we have Java EE8 uh, product implementation, such as Glassfish. Um, we will soon have WebLogic and so on. So Java EE uh, as a brand remains. It, it doesn't disappear. It's only the evolution of the platform that will now be done under the Jakarta EE brand. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. If there are, if anybody is still confused about this, there is. I know there are resources out there that they can go to. Maybe you could suggest a few places that people can go and uh, and and get get some more knowledge. So the. I would anyway. If any any anyone is interested, uh, even remotely, about what's being done within the Java e space, I would encourage them to join the community. We have to keep in mind that there is Java e, but under Java e, there are there there are a bunch of projects and a bunch of API. All those API are moving. So if anybody is just using, for example, the JaxRS API, they should be engaged because at the end uh, they will be able to define how those API how, how that API uh, is evolving. So the way they can be engaged uh, today is basically by joining the mailing list on the E4J uh, community. There are a lot of discussion going on, but I mean, it's good to see that the community is really keen on moving the, uh, the platform forward. Perfect. David, thank you very much for joining us.